Welcome to Reese Toolbox. I have a chunk of wood that is uh, driftwood. I need to stabilize it so I can do something with it. Uh, it's a piece of driftwood. I need to dry it out first and then we need to do something with it because it's very brittle, very fragile. You can just just break off pieces of this. It just kind of almost crumbles in your hand. But to do something with this, I think I have a lamp in mind, um, or some type of light, I need to stabilize it. So let's uh, get started on that. First thing I have to do is to dry it out. So we're going to put that in the oven, get her dry. So to dry this out, I need to put it in the oven. I need to set the oven on water boils at 212. So I need to be above that. My next setting is 225. I'm going to Turn this on for an hour and a half. That's the highest this stove will go. So while this is heating up, uh, there's a couple of different ways of checking to see how uh, what the moisture content is. You can use a moisture meter. Uh, that works pretty good. Some people say it doesn't get accurate enough when you get really down to close to zero or down on the low end. Ideally we should use a digital scales for weighing the pieces. Uh, it, it's a more accurate, goes down a little bit finer measurements. I do not have one so we're going to have to do the best we can. These pieces have been dried a couple of days ago but I didn't test them to see how low to get them. I actually have a wooden mallet that I'm going to uh, do at the same time. So, all together, I have 1.4 pounds on the scales, so I'm going to put them back in the oven for an hour, hour and a half, and then I will weigh them again and see what the weight is. If it's the same, then I know I'm good to go. When we dry these pieces down, they need to be in their own separate oven. You don't want to take this stuff into the house. Um, if you have a small toaster oven, that works great. Highly suggest getting a oven thermometer because the dial on the little toaster ovens aren't always that accurate. So I can see right here I am running at uh, looks like about 225. So I'm going to keep an eye on this working out in the shop so I don't have to uh, worry about it catching fire and I'm not going to know it. Shouldn't have any trouble with that at this temperature but things happen. Keep an eye on these pieces in the oven for an hour and a half now. At 225. Let's see what they weigh up now. It is still it's 1.4 pounds. So it hasn't moved any. What I'm going to do, because I don't have a digital scale, so I'm going to put them back in for another hour and a half and we will show you how do we take care of them. First I wrap these in tin foil and then I wrap them in saran wrap. The idea is to keep the moisture out of the wood while it cools off. I can't go ahead and put this straight into the resin because the resin is heat activated and it won't soak in. So we'll let this cool off and I'll show you how we build the vacuum chamber and then we'll go to the next step. So after that wood gets dried, get all the moisture out of it, then we need to stabilize it. We're going to put some, uh, put it in a cactus juice bath. Cactus juice is a special product made to uh, soak into the wood. Really low viscosity. Um, we need to, first of all, suck the air out of the wood. Uh, wood's very porous, especially some brittle piece like we have here. So we're going to make a vacuum chamber. I made one out of PVC pipe. You can buy them, of course. I have a, this is a two foot piece. Solid end on one end is glued on. The other end is open. I just have a ring. Uh, I cut it off to where it would just fit over the end here. I don't have the other end. It just makes it wider here for my plexiglass to seal on that. I'm gonna take a gasket uh, material, put between the two. Then when the suction is applied, it's going to go ahead and suck the lid down tight while it sucks the air 
out of the wood. It's going to take a little bit, but we can get it done. And then when the, all the air is out of it, we don't see any bubbles anymore, we're going to take the vacuum off and the cactus juice will be allowed to soak into the wood. It's going to be drawn into the wood, fill up all those uh, spaces, all, all those open pores where the moisture was, and it's going to fill that up. Then we're going to bake it in the oven, and that's going to uh, set it up just about like uh, we would use epoxy. It doesn't fill up the voids as far as big cracks and things like that, but it does stabilize the wood, makes it uh, hard. So we so can turn it the lid of my vacuum chamber. I have a vacuum gauge. I have a clear piece of plexiglass. This is quarter inch. So I need to run to the store and find a way to fasten this onto the lid. So big shout out. Thank you to Martin at the local auto parts store. Did a lot of work getting all these pieces together. Now let's get them assembled. Well, that was easy. I have my vacuum chamber secured in a five gallon bucket. So it's going to hold it up. And then I have my gauge on top, my clear lid on top so we can see what's going on. And I tried it not too long ago and I tested it out earlier today and closed the valves to see how it would do with vacuum. So as you can see it's holding vacuum quite nicely. So to take this off I'm going to let air back into the system. And I can take my lid off. I simply have a rubber o-ring that fits right on top of that pipe and makes the seal once the vacuum is applied. You do want to keep the pump away from this unit while it's drawing the vacuum so the heat from the pump doesn't activate the cactus juice. We want a clear lid on this so we can see what's going on with the bubbles. We simply turn the vacuum on and that will draw down and make the seal on the pipe here. When the vacuum is on, it's going to draw air out of the chamber on the top part or above the fluid level and it's going to create a negative uh, pressure in there and that's going to help draw the air out of the wood that's down below the level of the fluid or the cactus juice in this case. So we're going to put the vacuum on we're going to keep going until we draw all the bubbles out. Once the bubbles stop, we're going to note how long it took. And then we're going to at least double the time, if not triple or more, of how long we're going to let that uh, set inside of the cactus juice. We're going to create the negative pressure to draw the air out of the wood and then we're going to give it time for that capillary action and let that cactus juice soak back into the wood. So we're going to give it time to do that. The wood that we dried out has cooled off, so it's time to put this inside the tube. To show you how brittle this is, this is slightly wider than what it takes to get in here. So I can simply chew this off with my fingernail. Trim that down to where it's going to fit. This is very light and very brittle, so we're going to see if this, how well this helps it. So my problem is. I don't have quite enough room here to have a safety area as far as I want to have a couple inches of cactus juice above my piece here. I don't have that volume in here so what I'll we'll have to do is suck air out of here and 
let that soak in and then I will have to apply vacuum again and get that to work in that way. I don't want this to float once the cactus juice is in there so I have to put a weight something on that to help hold it down. One nice advantage using cactus juice over epoxy is it is water cleanup so that's kind of nice. You can see the bubbles, the air, being drawn out of the wood. As the air is drawn out of the wood, the air in the chamber above the wood, of course, is being decreased due to the vacuum. The fluid level actually rises, so be careful of that. Watch so it doesn't hit the uh, gauge. You do not want cactus juice inside of your pump. The quarter inch piece of plexiglass wasn't strong enough. The pressure of the vacuum was cracking the glass. Eventually, I thought it was time to replace it. Quarter inch was all that I had, so I doubled it and made a new lid. It eventually started to fail as well, so I will have to look for something different. Remember to let it soak for twice the amount of time as it took to get all the air out of it. It took five hours to get all the bubbles to stop, so the instructions on the package said double the time to let it soak, at least, minimum, so that would be ten hours. And you notice that did not come up when I took the weight off of it. This has been soaking now for 16 hours. So I'm going to let all the cactus juice drain out. And whenever it stops flowing out of this piece, it's time to put it in the oven. So when most of the drips quit, I went ahead and put this in the oven. It is set on 200 degrees and the instruction said bake for two to three hours so I will go three hours because my oven uh, can go on one and a half hours max and then I have to reset it so why not the wood that I have isn't that dense so it probably would be okay with two hours but three is what it's going to get I have all three pieces of wood stabilized now and the weight when we started before I stabilized them after I dried them was 1.4 pounds now we have 4.2 pounds so so they've gained 2.8 pounds since we have stabilized them and filled them with the cactus juice so all the wood has been stabilized if you was to try and pick this with your finger now uh, try to gouge it with the screwdriver uh, it, it doesn't give I've tried several times to uh, pick at it and see what I can get off of there so this is a really nice hard stable piece of wood uh, if this was a better piece I could turn it on the lathe it's sturdy enough now I shouldn't have any trouble with that I have a project in mind for this I'm going to make a type of a lamp the other piece of driftwood I am definitely going to make a lamp based out of this and uh, if you want to see the finished projects hopefully you've subscribed already uh, ring that bell that way you're notified uh, when the next video has come out I'm really happy with the way this turned out I'm going to use that process again this is my first time for using the cactus juice so I don't think it'll be my last so thanks for watching uh, if you haven't subscribed like I said Please do so, ring that bell, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.